Yeah, funny stuff. Um, Strange. Well, there was a day that we were working on a, a pilot called Bunker Hill, which I believe now is Blue Bloods with uh, Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. So, um, so we're on, so we're on set, and uh, I go into this little coffee shop because I'm like, you know, I, I need to get a coffee. Now I'm sure I could have walked over to Crafty and gotten something, but I was like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna buy a coffee over here. So I walked in, and then the guy I said, are you guys closed? And the guy's like, no, not yet. We're not closed. So I go inside and I, I order my coffee, and then I'm standing there, and and Bridget. Uh, Bridget Moynihan, Tom's ex-girlfriend, came in and she was working on the she was working on the pilot with us. So she walks in and it's just me and her and I'm like, oh, you know, because I have a big thing. I, when I go to when I go on set, I just I straight work. I mean, I'm only there to work. I'm not there to mingle. So and I, I think that's what gives me a good reputation because I just want to be working and that's it. So I don't really I don't really get in the way. So she comes in and she says, um, aren't you with the crew? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, um, did you order coffee? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, they're not closed? I'm like, nope. And then, and then she says, oh, I want a coffee. So I said, oh, OK. Um, do you need some money? You want me to spot you some money? And she's like, no, that's OK. And she kind of laughed. And then I go, no, really, you can pay me back. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not used to carrying cash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. So it was pretty funny, pretty funny. Yeah, it must be so. must be interesting working with these people. Yeah, I, I like it a lot because for me, I like to study. Uh, and uh, so when I'm on set with some of these people, I just like to watch them and, and not, you know, like I said, I, I don't like to get in the way, but I, lo I love to study some of the decisions that they make and some of the ways that, because, you know, a lot of times when you're on set firsthand, you can see that, you know, how they're, how they're analyzing the character. For example, Christian Bale, I mean, on The Fighter, that was just, that was just, crazy. He was so intense. The way that he just got into Dick Eklund, he would not break Dick Eklund for anyone. Really? He basically on set the whole time. It was it was just like who is this crack addict because the whole time that's who he was. Wow. So, you know, and that and and certainly, I mean, that's why now you see that he got an Oscar for it. So, wow. Um, how did you get into this now? What, what, what uh, was your... Um, you know, when I was a kid, I, this was something that I always wanted to do. I did uh, public access. I did plays. Um, you know, I, I just started that way, and I just loved it. I loved, you know, being around the bright lights and the cameras, and wow. it was just exciting. So, um, you know, as I got older, I, um, I just kept going. I got involved in drama club and everything, and I had a buddy who I met um, doing a play, Wizard of Oz, and... Uh, and so when we got when we got into high school and everything, it was kind of one of those things we talked about. Yeah, you know, want to go to L A. Want to go to L A. And then, um, you know, when I was right around like 24, I was like, you know, my buddy said to me, he said, you want to go to L A. And I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so he said, all right, I'm leaving in a week. So I just I just jumped at, jumped everything and went out to L A. So um, it was a big move. And uh, and so I went out there and I just I just tried to get involved in whatever I could. And then. I came back and I felt kind of defeated when I came back and because uh, I was like there I was in LA doing my thing and now I'm back home and I thought all right you know that's it and then I came home and found out that they passed tax incentives and they followed you here <laughs> yeah it was wild I mean I don't want to say that you know it was you know follow me but it, it felt really good to come home and to think that I had a second chance yeah so, so and now you so being an actor you have like a gazillion accents you can do. <laughs> yeah, right? you're putting me on the spot. No, now. no, no. I just, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, we do, we do you get Irish, Scottish, yeah. Midwestern. Yeah. Wait, Midwest, do you wash your car? Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, especially with the resume, you know, one of the things that I find is put, put as much as you can on there that you can do. And, uh, you know, especially when it comes to like auditioning or something like that, you can do your homework before. So, you know, I, I really like to have every little thing on there. I do get some jabs every once in a while from some friends who are like, oh, you can dance? <laughs> so, but you know, you gotta, you gotta be versatile and especially being an actor. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you get out there and you just know that you can do it, you know, so. Really? So yeah, I see you. Uh, you get uh, quite a quite a repertoire here. You get Southern, you get New York from the Bronx. Is that New York? And, yeah, from and the separate, Bronx. Is yeah. there a separate one? <laughs> well, you know, is there a the separate Bronx. one from the Bronx? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, New England. That's a good accent, yeah. actually. People take that for granted. They do, and uh, you know, and seeing the past couple movies that have come to Boston, I mean, look at the Boston accent. I mean, you watch. Some major name stars mess up the Boston accent. Jack Nicholson Boston, really so. butchered it. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
he really, un when he did The Departed, he was being, oh, take it out of the mash. You know, it's like, yeah. no one goes to the mash. You know? No one does. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but so. uh, it was pretty good. Well, yeah, that's a good movie. Good so movie. so what, what, uh, what, are you, what do you got coming up now? What are your... Um, right now, I'm just, I keep moving. Um, you know, I, I did my shindig, which was one of the reasons why I had to um, miss the show, um, which I do is a filmmaker shindig, and basically that's like a filmmaking event where we get together with other filmmakers and everybody networks. Um, and so, of course, New England Talent Crew, which I'm still heavily involved in, which is, um, you know, it's a group of New England talent and crew, and uh, basically just staying active, you know. Um, I was very fortunate um, to get involved with Stephen Howitt's campaign early on, and, uh, you know, and make sure that in the case of Representative D'Amico, who was anti-film, to just really help push Stephen Howitt, because not only because of film, but because, you know, I respect Stephen Howitt and I respect, the, you know, his yeah, views. Yeah, he's, so. he's a real classy guy. He's a he's great, real good guy. We, we, you know, a lot of times people come in, they come in, they go, and, and especially the political ones because they, they're just... And it's, you know, nothing against them, but they just have such an aggressive schedule. They don't, oh, they don't yeah. even know they're here. They come in, they do the thing, you know. Yep. They come in, they'll sit down for a while, and then they're just gone. You know, it's like, wow. You know, yeah. like we they, had, you know, Karen the... Polito came here, and uh, she did a great show with us. But, I mean, she looked, as soon as we were done, she says, okay, I have to be in Shrewsbury <laughs> yeah. in 20 yeah. minutes. It's like yep. it's impossible to get there. Yeah, it's like the tour. you yeah. got to be everywhere at every time and yeah. doing anything, you know. But and Steve, we, Steve, uh, Steve stayed, and we had a nice chat, and uh, actually he came over the house. And Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He's a great guy. I mean, that's... You know, that's one of the one of the main reasons why, you know, it, not just to knock out D'Amico, it was, you know, here's a guy who I know, who I've worked with before, and he's somebody who, you know, in politics, somebody you can actually talk to and work with. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, if you have an opposing view, you know, I, I've, I personally would love to see the days where everyone could just reach across the aisle and work together again, and, and hopefully, you know, it's not too partisan right now. And, uh, you know, and that's why, especially in the, in the instance of film, it's one of those things where it, it's totally nonpartisan. I mean, both sides support film, um, you know, and so it, it, we've been very lucky in Massachusetts that we have a legislature like that, yeah. where, they both, where they both support well, something. To any, anyone who's ever been you know, near or on a movie set, luck, fortunate enough, I've, I've done it because of, of my work. I was working on a project and there was a movie going on. This was way back when they were doing Karate Kid 3. Oh, wow. Right? And they filmed yeah. that. Now, that, that they filmed that one at Brookline High School. Yeah. Okay? And uh, that was, it was a long time ago. But, I mean, to see what the support was locally from that, mm. to see how many businesses and how many, it, it was just mind-boggling. Yeah. I mean, to see where, you know, where all this stuff came from. It didn't come from Hollywood. It all came local. Right. Right, and they they may bring lighting and stuff with them, but they, they you know yeah, which is as, which is natural. I mean, they didn't it? bring all the fresh food, and they didn't you know they didn't bring all the you know flowers and all the things that they need that they can you know laundry service and everything oh, yeah. else. Well, that's a misconception of um, you know some of the media is to get that gotcha moment where they say, oh, the plates are from New York. Well. You know, of course, they're going to have to bring in a truck from New York because that's where those trucks are stationed. But the the fact of the matter is, is that that company is a Massachusetts company. So mm -hmm. that company is leasing out the truck from you know New York, and hopefully, when we get studios, a lot of those trucks will be stationed and registered here. But you know, those companies are Massachusetts people. Well, those are Massachusetts Teamsters driving the trucks. So yeah, they don't complain about the ones coming and watching sporting events. <laughs> right. just, you know, they go from one to the other to the other. <laughs> they don't hang out here. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, unless there's the playoffs or something. You know, yeah. like like last year, the Celtics in the playoffs. You know, they they actually kept uh, they kept the television crew where it was in Mansfield at the Holiday Inn. Yeah, yeah. For a while, so that's where they kept all the vehicles. Yeah. So. And that was that was a well kept secret around town. Yep. They're not there now, so I can tell. <laughs> but no, that uh, it, when you go, if you've been through a movie set and you can see, as far as just the restaurants are busy around there, the hotels are busy because all these pe you know people have to you know stay, and it's a long day, right? If you're shooting. Yeah. Oh, well, the days are, you know, that's one of the only the only bad thing about a film set would be how much time you have to be on the film set because you have to be there pretty much in the director's back pocket so that any time the director needs you or wants you, he can just pull you right out and have you right there. And so the days are very, very long days. Now, does it, does it, 
Does it ever look like it does on TV where you have to do take after take after take of the same scene? <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, you see on the outtakes, it's because usually because someone can't say it straight without cracking up. Oh, yeah. But as I mean, sometimes it's just because it, it doesn't look right. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, they literally, you know, when, when some of these main actors sign on for the movies, they sign on for three months, and everybody... You know, you're, you're doing the same thing for three months, but everybody has a couple times where they need to do another take or, you know, just take it again to get in that mode. So, right. and uh, you want it perfect. I mean, you're spending that money. You want to make sure that it's perfect. So those takes, every take counts. Right. So, That's, so yeah, so the, so the, now who is it that chooses, like, it's, is it the producer of the movie, the director that chooses the location? I mean, the actors usually don't unless they're, part of the production crew right? yeah it's um you know it's a little bit of it's a little bit of the team effort um you know you have a director that has a certain vision for the for the script and for the movie and then you have some producers who might say okay well we need to take it into here and we need to do it this way and then uh you know it's overall you just hope that the director is happy and uh that can work with whatever they give them right now there's a there's a guy there's a gentleman in town here he's, he's a optometrist and his name is uh, Joel Hayden he actually <laughs> a few years ago he, he entered a contest somewhere yeah and a trivia contest and it was like a three stooges trivia thing and the prize was a part in one of the Ferrelli brothers movies he, oh, he actually had a speaking part in uh, stuck on you oh nice yeah that's great he had one line yeah he had one line but he had to you know do the whole screen actors guild and he's oh the, yeah and uh, He's been try. I guess he's been. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I guess he still tries to get little parts here and there. Yeah. I think the last thing he got was, uh, it wasn't on camera, but it was just when they did Underdog. Oh yeah. You know, his, you know look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's one of those. He did one of them. I don't know if yeah. he did. It's a bird or whatever. Yeah. But That's it's great. funny that they actually. You know, you're gonna have to go through the Screen Actors Guild. And they don't says, hey, you know, hey, to grab some guy and say, hey, look, say it's a bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and that's one of those things that uh, Ben Affleck, I know when he came to town, he, you know, he's very infamous for grabbing a lot of people that, you know, he, he just grabs them and he wants to put them in the movie, you know, yeah. because he likes their look. So he has that, you know, our tour sort of. Uh, hey, Ben. Hey, Ben. You know, come on, I want to do a movie. You should I, definitely I can be put in your pictures. Work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I actually I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the radio this weekend. I'm gonna be on the Joe and Huggy show with uh, oh, nice. Joe Ligotti, the guy from Boston. Oh, yeah. And uh, you know, because I, I do have the looks for radio, so I think <laughs> I found a you know <laughs> Oh come on. You, they, they gotta do some video on there for YouTube uh, or something. I don't know. Me, I don't know what they there. do. I, it's a, it's gonna be a new experience, <laughs> but I, I'm excited about it. Well congratulations. Yeah, and Break Joe Joe's gonna reciprocate and he's gonna come on here. He was scheduled to come on a while ago and uh, just he had a couple of family issues and then he had a couple other issues and then his job was an issue so now he's changing his schedule and as of april he's available to come on so we've got him great. booked great yeah that and an actually show. speaking to other people that you might know the one and only gina tempesta is coming on oh awesome yeah and everybody you may know her as the first lady of boston traffic you know yeah. first person you hear in the morning is that traffic report <laughs> she doesn't do that anymore oh wow yeah she's had enough she enough of getting up at three o'clock in the morning i am a she has a whole new <laughs> She's taking her career in a new direction. I'm not going to say what it is because we're going to let her spring it on us here. Nice. But uh, it's it's got nothing to do with traffic. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, and uh, she's she's doing quite well. That's cool. So, but uh, it's it's just weird if you, this whole movie situation in Massachusetts. Every mm. every movie you see now has got something in Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, and let's hope that it keeps going. Um, you know, I, I know that uh, you know those guys want to film here, so hopefully. Is it, what is, what is the draw here? Uh, other than the tax credit, I'm sure they can get a tax credit elsewhere. What's the yeah. draw here? Well, I think that um, number one, this is becoming a hot spot again. Um, you know, and, and and certainly we have so many different places that you can film at, so many different locations that are just completely different. Um, you know, I worked on a film called Light Keepers, and that was with Richard Dreyfuss and Blythe Danner, and um, and so that was down the Cape, and they basically dubbed it out to be. You know, um, like kind of like the Wild West almost. I mean, it was, they brought in sand and they put all sand in a parking lot. They had horses and well, everything. I guess that's my question. Cool. Then why can't they just do it anywhere? Why do they all seem to like it here? Well, I mean, who I doesn't just, love I, I don't mind. No, I mean, I don't <laughs> mind. I'm just, I'm asking an objective question yeah. here. No, I mean, what, no, I like that. What's the draw? I mean, is yeah. it, it, it you know, other places give them film credit. I know that. Right. 
Well, you know, and, and that goes back to part of it, too. I mean, uh, you know, once climate? you have a, Is it because we have seasons here? Well, we do have seasons here. That's certainly true. Yeah, I mean, we got winter, that's for sure. But not today. <laughs> very lucky to have a day like today after yeah. that long winter. Yeah. Um, but, but certainly, I think that one of the things that adds to it is the fact that once you have...